able to quickly and consistently score hits on target. This leaves little doubt that at typical gunfight distances, if you can see your target, you can hit it with point shooting. In extremely low light conditions, point shooting offers the advantage of leaving the non-gun hand free to use a flashlight. Unlike two-handed firing methods, point shooting technique does not change when used with a flashlight, again making it easier to learn, retain, and apply the more complicated shooting methods. Note that when the flashlight is used with point shooting, it is held out away from the body. This provides an extra margin of safety should the opponent fire at the light. It also allows you to use the light from behind cover while maintaining your gun at the ready. It also should be noted that in military scenarios, point shooting is the only technique which enables you to effectively return fire at your enemy's muzzle flashes. With minimal amounts of practice, most average shooters can develop the ability to consistently hit head-sized targets at combat distances using point shooting. This is a practical and easily attained standard, which will allow them to target their opponent's vital organs in a gunfight. Once this standard is achieved firing from a stationary position, it's time to begin adding mobility to point shooting technique. To engage multiple targets from a standing position with point shooting, use the same pivoting movement utilized with the body point technique. Pivot smoothly on the balls of your feet until your shoulders are squared with your target, then raise your hand and fire. Lower your hand while pivoting to the next target, then raise it again to fire. This will ensure that your body is aligned with the target before you attempt firing. One common mistake is to leave your feet in place and swing your gun arm only. It is extremely difficult to control such a movement and practically impossible to aim consistently this way. Another common mistake is to reposition your feet by jumping rather than pivoting. Once again, such a movement is very difficult to control and it is unlikely that you'll ever be able to land with your feet in the same place twice. Curiously, a version of this technique was actually adopted and taught for many years by the FBI. Known as the FBI crouch, this technique called for the gun hand to be held low near the hip and for the shooter to engage targets by jumping to change direction. Needless to say, it is not a very effective technique. Proper pivoting allows you to quickly face multiple targets while maintaining complete control of your movement. This is the best way to get your shots on target. Pivoting can also be utilized while moving to engage targets to your flanks. Begin by assuming an instinctive crouch, then walking while maintaining the same basic posture. When a target presents itself, stop your motion and smoothly pivot to face it. Practice this movement on different types of terrain until you can pivot reflexively in either direction and fire with either foot forward. One great advantage of one-handed point shooting over two-handed firing methods is that it allows you to move and pivot very naturally. Two-handed methods typically lock the upper body in a predetermined firing position, making pivoting to your flanks difficult and unnatural. In this exercise, note how walking pivots and stationary pivots are both utilized, combining balanced tactical movement with swift and effective point shooting technique.
At greater distances where the threat of a hostile opponent is less imminent and you have slightly more time before you must fire, it is possible to use your free hand to reinforce and help steady your gun hand. Initially, you should practice this by first executing a standard one-handed point shooting response, then raising the free hand to form a two-handed grip. To assume a correct two-handed grip, wrap the fingers of your free hand tightly around the front of your gun hand. In addition to steadying your hold on the gun and helping to control recoil, this technique is useful for individuals with small hands who have difficulty gripping large pistols solidly with only one hand. Whenever you're ready. Here the use of the supporting hand is demonstrated in a live fire exercise at the range. Note that the shooter is farther from the target than he was for one-handed point shooting. This increased distance from the threat is what allows him the time to utilize a two-handed hold. If you are at or near the limits of your one-handed point shooting abilities and have the presence of mind to do so, you may establish a two-handed grip before raising your pistol. Keeping your elbows straight and your eyes focused on the threat, raise your arms together until the gun reaches your line of sight. The other movements of the body, including assuming a crouch and squaring the shoulders with the threat, remain consistent with the instinctive reactions to stress. This method of two-handed shooting is commonly known as the isosceles stance. If you have sufficient time and your non-gun hand is not being used to open a door, operate a flashlight, or perform any other tactical movement, a two-handed hold can be used to reinforce your point shooting technique and extend your effective range. If the threat you face is not imminent, you are able to control your reactions to stress sufficiently, can afford to take your focus off the threat for a split second, and have sufficient light to see your sights, two-handed aimed fire may be used. The most basic technique for this begins with a two-handed isosceles point shooting stance. Once you have raised the gun to eye level, shift your focus from the target to your sights. The front sight is the most important point of focus and should be visually superimposed on the target. This is often referred to as a flash front sight picture. A more sophisticated method of two-handed aimed fire is the weaver stance. With this method, the shoulders are turned at an angle to the target and the body is more upright. The elbow of the supporting arm is bent and the supporting hand pulled back while the gun hand is pushed forward. This creates an isometric tension which helps control recoil and allows for rapid follow-up shots. The finely coordinated body positioning of the weaver stance is obviously contrary to the instinctive physical responses to stress. This technique therefore requires considerable practice to master and continuous reinforcement training if you hope to be able to use it in a gunfight. Like all sighted fire techniques, it also depends upon the availability of sufficient levels of light to be effective.
Once again, realistic combat shooting technique is a continuum, which ranges from extreme close-range body point firing to two-handed sighted fire techniques. Where you fire along this continuum depends upon your level of training, the circumstances of the violent encounter, and most importantly, your ability to function while experiencing the instinctive physical reactions to life-threatening stress. For the average shooter, facing the conditions of the typical gunfight, point shooting remains the most natural and effective combat shooting technique. Although practice in aim fire methods is useful, it should not be done at the expense of point shooting training. Shooters trained exclusively in two-handed sighted fire techniques are in reality only half trained for the conditions of the battlefield or dark alley. To demonstrate the progression of technique of the combat shooting continuum, we placed markers at five foot intervals from this steel silhouette target. At contact distance out to about five feet, the body point is the most appropriate technique, but for reasons of safety, it is not demonstrated with this steel target. The shooter begins at the 10 foot line, firing two rounds center mass using one handed point shooting. In a real gunfight, he would of course continue to fire until the threat was stopped. Moving back to 15 feet, one-handed point shooting is again the technique of choice. One-handed point shooting remains an effective tactic for this shooter at both 20 and 25 feet. Your choice of technique will depend on the circumstances of the conflict and your level of skill. At 30 feet, this shooter adds his supporting hand to steady his hold but keeps his visual focus on the target and point shoots. Together. At 35 feet, the shooter begins with a two-handed hold and shoots isosceles style. At this range, if the situation allows, he may either point shoot or use a flash sight picture. At 40 feet, the shooter is able to overcome his reactions to stress sufficiently to use the weaver stance and a flash sight picture. Again, where you fire along the continuum depends on you. You may proceed through several stages before you fire, or you may decide upon your firing technique immediately. Remember, however, that most handgun encounters occur suddenly, in low light, and at close range. The best solution to these conditions remains point shooting. Point shooting has been criticized by some so-called authorities as outdated and only capable of providing inaccurate, unaimed fire. However, statistics compiled from shooting incidents on today's streets continue to show that it is what most people instinctively rely on in the stress of a gunfight, regardless of their formal training in sighted fire techniques. One of the latest developments in combat shooting technology is the use of gun-mounted flashlights and laser sights, which illuminate or project a visible dot on the target, marking the intended point of bullet impact. The development and use of these sights is significant because it acknowledges that in the heat of a gunfight, you will in fact look at the target, not your weapon's sights. It also acknowledges that most gunfights occur in low-light conditions in which conventional sights are useless. In order to successfully use a laser sighted weapon with two-handed sighted fire techniques, these techniques must be modified to allow the shooter to maintain his focus on the target. When this pistol is held in a proper weaver grip, the laser dot disappears behind the weapon's sights. However, when used with one or two-handed point shooting technique, the laser dot not only remains visible to the shooter, it is automatically aligned on the target.
The modifications to sighted fire methods ultimately result in recreating point shooting technique. The ability to instinctively point your weapon while maintaining your focus on the threat. Point shooting does this with or without a laser and has been winning gunfights for over 50 years. So why not learn one technique that you can bet your life on, no matter what weapon or what attachments you're using?